Greetings, everybody, and Happy New Year to you all. Uh, my name is Joko Bofi. I'm a curator and editor at the Elephant.info. Uh, today, I'll, I'll be speaking to Dr. Chibanzi Mwachonda. Uh, Dr. Mwachonda is the Acting Secretary General of, of Kenya Medical Practitioners and Nurses Union. Uh, and today we'll be discussing about really the health crisis and uh, that, that the, the COVID-19 has brought to, to us here and what are some of the, the major, the major ch changes that are happening in that space, you know. So uh, without further ado, let me introduce Dr. Machonda. Karibu, Dr. Ari. Thank you, Joe, for this invite. Thank you so much. I think just, just, just to really uh, jump start into this interview, uh, I, I'd like, I'd like for you as, as a doctor, but also as a unionist and an activist. Uh, and and in, so you're someone who's working from the inside, but also uh, from the outside again, also trying to critique and trying to uh, push for kind of change. Uh, in in your view, uh, how have we fared as a country so far around the COVID nineteen pandemic? Uh, in particular, how uh, in terms of the government response, but also even uh, the union's response, but and also even just the the general health of the, our health infrastructure and the people. How have we fared? Uh, coming uh, from your vantage point. Yeah, um, first and foremost, to say that um, <clears throat> the COVID-19 situation rather was a situation that was unforeseen last year around uh, March, April, right. when it started. And um, what, what we saw as a government response was a series of events and series of decisions made in order to, to one, cushion the public uh, on the sake of livelihoods and also a move to try and... Uh, improve our infrastructure and uh, the welfare of the healthcare professionals. That is improving the healthcare and strengthening the healthcare system. And um, to say that on the, on the move of cushioning, I think we also the tax breaks that were issued, the reduction of uh, VAT from 16 to 14%, the reduction of pay to 25%. So all these were moves that were meant to try and cushion um, the public because of the current of the situation that was that was there and uh, we saw restriction of movement from across different uh, counties that were deemed high risk counties um, these were all meant to curb the spread of, uh, of the disease and uh, to reduce the transmission of the disease across the country of course these were actions that were eventually uh, um, lifted and as a result then um, we had, uh, by the time the year was coming to an end, we had uh, COVID across the entire country. There was, a, there was a response taken in regards to ensuring that each county had at least 300 beds for isolation and treatment centers. We saw the hiring of uh, healthcare personnel, additional hiring of healthcare personnel to try and uh, boost the workforce that was already on the ground. Um, things that, um, I mean, these are actions that were meant to at least highlight. We also saw that there was a direction to uh, unveil a welfare package uh, that would uh, make sure that there was compensation for the doctors and other healthcare workers in the country for those who lost uh, their lives due to COVID-19. Now, the result is that by the end of the year, we had uh, gotten to a point where most of the targets that had been set, I mean, most of the target items, if you look at the 300 bed isolation of treatment centers in each county, most counties did not have that. We lost a number of, uh, of our colleagues uh, last year. By the time the year was coming to an end, it lost 14 doctors and uh, most of them being specialists. We also lost a very young doctor under circumstances that also very painful. So all these doctors that we lost last year uh, really exposed the response in regards to the welfare safety and health of the healthcare personnel, and most of the doctors, uh, the, the lack of uh, dedicated healthcare facilities in the county, the lack of uh, comprehensive medical insurance in most counties, and also the counties not being able to compensate families of the deceased in, in, the, in the country. So the package that was unveiled for compensation was uh, for the doctors in the national government. Now, those in the uh, status, those in universities and those in the county governments did not get this package. And as, as we speak today, that is where we still are. There is no uh, commitment on the insurance compensation for the doctors in county governments, the doctors in, uh, in, in universities and the parastatals. Of course, the year ended with an in campus. Um, and as we speak, also, there is still industrial action uh, across the country. 
more so because the Council of Governors have uh, declined to accent to the return to work formula that had been agreed upon. And uh, even us as KMPD, we are still waiting for the chairman of Council of Governors to sign that return to work formula so that then the issues can be comprehensively addressed. So as you speak, that is where we are as a country. Um, so where are we in regards to our, how has the, the, the response been? The response has been in such that you saw government take a lot of effort to try and combat COVID-19. At the same time, there are loopholes, and uh, these loopholes is where you saw the unions coming out really strong, most on the welfare of uh, healthcare personnel. And um, unfortunately, the response that came from the government was not one that was willing to listen, but rather to dismiss the issues and the grievances that are being raised that we were losing doctors. And we still keep, uh, with this year, we've already lost one senior specialist, a rare specialist, uh, a neurologist who's been practicing in this country for yeah. so long. Mm -hmm. So we are still more so in a situation where our healthcare workers remain at risk mm -hmm. and that risk has not gone. COVID infections are well, the down, but uh, because of the festive seasons and the holidays, we are likely to see a trend just like we've seen in other countries in Africa, like Africa, in the Europe, in the mm -hmm. US, uh, where infections have really spiraled uh, after the Christmas breaks and the New Year's uh, break because of now uh, super spreader events that were held during this time of the festive seasons. Mm -hmm. Our testing capacity has also been suboptimal over the uh, festive season and over the holidays. And um, if we increase the testing capacity, we are likely to see an increase in the number of infections across the country. So we are still not yet out of the woods as a country. But more so, I think people have gotten used to COVID. And so the fear of COVID is no longer there. So what you're dealing with is um, a situation where people are no longer fearful of COVID, people want mm -hmm. to go out and, and um, attend their normal economic activities, but uh, the disease remains very rampant amongst us as a society and as a country. Mm -hmm. You know, th thanks for that very comprehensive, you know, starting point. I mean, there, there are a lot of touching points that we, that we touch as we move this conversation. But I mean, but you've mentioned something around, you know, the death of doctors and uh, I mean, just, uh, you know, the personnel. And uh, uh, to, to, to my, from, from my vantage point, uh, uh, one of the things that, 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 that uh, I've seen and also perhaps we have seen as a country is that the stress, the stress test for our health, our health infrastructure has really, 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 has really, really focused really on personnel. You know, we have seen, I mean, in the span of two weeks, we saw uh, eight doctors, eight senior doctors passing on, as you've mentioned, uh, just last week, we uh, then Dr. Kioi, the neurologist, we lost another senior specialist. So, I mean, so how, what, what, are, what, are, what, are, what are the implications of, 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 of our workforce that one is demotivated that, that is too uh, demotivated because of uh, lack of infrastructure, uh, lack of infrastructure, lack of better pay, lack of equipment. But even now, as we have seen during COVID, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a high risk of death. Well, what does that mean for, 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 for Kenya in particular? Well, we must appreciate the fact that as a country, we have uh, an acute shortage of doctors and other healthcare personnel. Mm -hmm. Our doctors are less than 10,000 uh, in the country, <clears throat> as you speak, in active clinical practice. Uh, total number of doctors on the register as of last year, end of last year, was around 13,000. So we still have a very big shortage. And secondly, is that um, the doctor population is that uh, is well below the WHO requirements of 1 to 1,000. So we're talking of uh, an average of 1 to 10,000 Kenyans. So if you lose eight doctors, uh, who's each serving 10,000, Kenyans, you're looking at uh, 80,000 uh, Kenyans who lack this access to healthcare service. And that is just on the average because at the end of the day, these doctors serve Kenyans in both private and public sectors and they serve Kenyans every day. So the numbers could be higher than the ratio. So we lost specialists from a plastic surgeon to a neurologist this year. We lost uh, a nephrologist who was running the East African Kidney Institute last year. We also lost obstetricians. So all these have an impact uh, in terms of chronic diseases like um, hypertension and kidney, chronic kidney diseases and renal failure. Right. There's an impact on uh, plastic uh, surgeon services, uh, plastic surgery services. We had an impact on obstetrician and gynecology services. Mm. This is where we are talking about maternal mortality and child. We lost pediatricians. 
So we lost doctors across all specialties in, in the medical field. Mm -hmm. And this puts a strain because uh, when you talk about specialists, you only have 2,700 specialists in the entire country serving a population of 50 million. So the impact is really immense. And mm -hmm. we cannot, as a country now, let this continue because something has to be done in regards to ensuring that uh, the safety and health of our frontline uh, workers is really, really put, uh, given a priority, a national priority in this sense. So that's where we are. And if you look back um, at what we were really pushing for last year was that um, one, let the cover cover everyone, let everyone have comprehensive medical insurance because we really struggled uh, paying bills of our colleagues, having to fundraise amongst ourselves as medical professionals, and yet we are serving, a, a serving the country. So the issues that we're raising were really very genuine. The circumstances of death indicated uh, that our healthcare facilities in the public, most of the public facilities were not very well equipped to handle uh, the healthcare personnel. And so we lost some of the personnel while on transit from one county to try and get to Nairobi. So that remains a key priority, even as we, as we as the year has changed to 2021, right. is that um, the, the oxygen requirement in all facilities is really key. Uh, the issue of intensive care units, the issue of critical care personnel to handle the pandemic and handle patients who really suffer from uh, uh, chronic, I mean, critical care diseases, uh, COVID, severe COVID infection being an example, and many other. Uh, critical care situations uh, due to, I mean, uh, kidney failure, neurological diseases, all, I mean, coma, patients were in coma. We require critical care personnel. And what we've seen now this year, where the grievances are being dismissed to an extent, now we're seeing the firing of healthcare personnel. Doctors, uh, we saw Mombasa County uh, fire 86 doctors last week. At the same time, we saw Kisumu County firing 480, 480 nurses. All this happened in one day. Uh, towards the end of the week, we saw other clinical officers and nurses being fired in PC. This week, we just began the week with firing of more nurses and uh, clinical officers because of grievances that are very genuine. Um, but what you're seeing is now a brinkmanship approach by the Council of Governors, most of the county governments on these matters that are affecting healthcare personnel. And that trend is not healthy for the country. It will not help the country because at the end of the day, the country really needs its healthcare personnel uh, to try and uh, combat this disease and uh, offer services to Kenyans on the other healthcare ailments that are still uh, in, 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 they're still with us. Hmm. I mean, I mean, thanks, thanks. You've mentioned, you know, the issues issues that doctors have been raising and the medical uh, medical. Uh, Fraternity, you know, around issues of oxygen, medical cover, etc., and then and, and then uh, the backlash, as you've said, you know, uh, that uh, uh, the brickmanship by uh, uh, government agencies, in particular, and as you've mentioned, the COG. But I mean, but but this 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 this, this to my mind has been has been very cloudy because uh, Kenyans, the last couple of months, Kenyans have been, uh, to say the least, entertained, you know, by just the back and forth between. Uh, the Ministry of Health, uh, political actors, the Council of Governors, uh, uh, Council of, and the doctors and the union around around what's happening in the country. But just as as the as a union chair, if you just uh, if, you, if you would kindly articulate what are the issues that uh, uh, the union, in particular, the doctors are uh, aggravating against, and 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 how has how has how has uh, all these how have all the players reacted to, to these issues? Because there's been a lot of you know back and forth, such that uh, most Kenyans are left wondering what's really going on. So if you just if you just kindly just articulate what are the issues that you've been that the union has been uh, advocating for, and the response that you've gotten from each from 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 the political actors, from the Council of Governors, from uh, the citizens at large, you know, what, if you could just kindly do this. I think um, by the time we issued a strike notice, there were 11 core issues that we had raised in the strike notice. Right. The first one being the fact that um, uh, the comprehensive uh, medical insurance, comprehensive mm -hmm. group life, last expense uh, uh, cover uh, had uh, excluded the doctors in the county governments, the doctors in parastatals, and the doctors in the universities and teaching hospitals. The other issue that we had really uh, uh, brought on forth was, was the issue of comprehensive medical insurance to the National Hospital Insurance Fund. 
because the treatment expenses for COVID were extremely high and most insurance companies that are private up until today are not able to cover for the full cost of COVID should one. So intensive care unit and requires uh, ventilatory support and uh, the cocktail of drug that I used is, is a bit too expensive for uh, to cover. We were pushing that the, 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 the package for insurance and compensation be all inclusive of the doctors in the country. There was a page to some of our colleagues in uh, the universities at the Ministry of Health and uh, some of the parastatals. And of course, the other more doctors because uh, we really have an acute shortage. And the more doctors we lose, the more the shortage uh, really becomes a, a big hindrance to the community also to offer healthcare services. So we'd, uh, we have over 2,000 doctors who still remain unemployed up until today. And um, on average, we, that 47 counties, if you do um, 20 doctors in each county, then you're looking at that number then, and some number of uh, 2,000 doctors. So it's not really, uh, uh, I mean, unreasonable demands. What, what, what that requires is resources to really um, uh, combat COVID-19 and also strengthen the healthcare system. Of course, there's an issue of a dedicated healthcare facility because it's an issue that we raised and um, we still are pursuing up until today, even as uh, there was that ceasefire uh, through the even more further to try and resolve these matters. There was an the issue of uh, <coughs> doctors who may based on contract at the Ministry of Health. It's and uh, that was the most sad, saddest uh, death ever, uh, having not been paid at the time. And um, these six months, in this month, COVID is still with us. Um, it's an issue that we're still continuing to pursue with regards to the renewal of their contracts. And that there also a session uh, and, and, and insurance for, for these doctors. Then, of course, lastly, was the issue of uh, creating a health services commission of human resources for health across the country. That's a long term, that's a long term solution to all the industrial unrest we are witnessing and we keep witnessing. So those, uh, that's a summary of the issues that we had put on the table. Um, of course, there's a multi-agency team uh, that, that mapped out the issues and what required to be done. We are yet to see any substantive action even as we speak with regards to the issues so far. So, I mean, so, so, so then, I mean, I mean, you've clearly articulated the issues, but for, for, to my mind, then, then if, I mean, they sound, they sound very, very clear and very straightforward that as a, as a, as a citizen, I would, I would want a health system that reflects, you know, those kind of things, you know, more medical staff, insurance, ETC. But my question is then, then why has there been this back and forth between uh, uh, the union, the Council of Governors, the Ministry of Health. What's, what's really going on? I remember that um, health is a function. Uh, it's partly the responsibility between the national governments and the county government. So what we've, we've, we've constantly seen this conflict of relationship with the national government. And this has really, really hampered um, healthcare service delivery because when counties indicate or rather decry that is to run services because the national government has, is, has not released funds to, for, to the counties and salaries are not paid in time. The deals that have been sent on the county government in regards to our implementation of the collective bargaining agreement 2017-2021 on promotions, on insurance, being remitted to the insurer and uh, loans such a reduction are not being limited to insurance because there's lack of funding in the county level. Then it puts the work of the doctors at a, at a crossroads because that on one end you're required to provide services, but then your welfare is not really taken care of. And uh, this relationship has been like this for the last seven years since uh, devolution took effect. And that is why uh, for us is that we can no longer continue with this. Um, this need for centralizing and uh, managing human resources for health centrally and away from all, uh, back and forth with the national and county governments so that then now you can you'll always have 
the welfare issues, if it's salaries paid, if it's training or if it's promotions, if it's employment, it's being done by an independent body that has both the representation of both the national and the county governments through a health services commission to delink that clamor for resources between the two levels of government. Because for as long as healthcare workers are in between this clamor of resources, then what happens is we'll co have constant, constant unrest amongst the healthcare personnel who feel they're really putting up a fight uh, against this, this COVID disease and not offering services. But then mm. at the same time, they feel let down because most of your welfare issues are not taken care of. And these are bread and butter issues that really affect doctors and other healthcare workers at the family level and the, and the community level. Okay, but but don't you don't you think a decentralizing of healthcare back to the center is is an is an assault against the broader vision of devolution? Uh, that instead of instead of decentralizing, don't you think it would be better if we say then perhaps we should fully devolve and and should devolve and then you have a commission that is very an oversight role, but it's not, uh, but it isn't uh, stifling the gains the gains made by devolution. Keep in mind that for before devolution, there were very many places in uh, in this country that uh, they not only have the personnel, but even the infrastructure. I mean, a, a, a case in point that, uh, uh, case in point was in McQueenie, for instance. Uh, I remember since from 1963 to 2012, there were 109 dispensaries in 50 years. Uh, from 2012 to 2017, I think they jumped over 109 to 300, and I think uh, the range of 350 is uh, not, not a confirmed number, but the range of 350 is just because of the health infrastructure going to the county. So is, is the problem here uh, a function of this, the center, the, the, the center trying to stifle devolution and using uh, this back and forth, the Council of Governors and ETC, or is it, so is it because, uh, because for, for, for the, it may, this may work for, certainly for the doctors, but we need to work for the, for, for the, for the, for the citizen who actually is the, is the, the beneficiary of, of proper healthcare work. So is it, is socialization just a, a benefit for the doctors, but it's not really for the citizens or, or what are your perspectives on that? Yeah, so first and foremost, you say that we are not against evolution. Mm -hmm. What we've put forth is that the healthcare personnel, not just doctors in this country, mm -hmm. require their own central body to manage, mm -hmm. and to standardize one, to standardize actually the management of human resources for health. Right. That is why we, we, we push for a health services commission. This one be links from the infrastructure and equipment at the, at the I mean, in the health sector. Now, if you're going to talk about um, rethinking how devolution works in the health sector, there is a proposal that you put forth, and, and this can really work for the country, that let the county government handle primary healthcare facilities, that is level two and three healthcare facilities, then level four and five. Remember, we had regional uh, hospitals known as uh, provincial hospitals before yes, devolution yes. Mm -hmm. that were covering a region. Uh, yes. We're coming the provinces, which which goes to uh, several number of districts and with district hospitals. Mm. So with devolution is that these regional hospitals have been put in one county. Mm. Still, their capacity is able to serve a region as opposed to a county. And so what we had put forth as a proposal is that let us have regional referral teaching and referral hospitals, more so like the provincial facilities that already there are the eight regional uh, provincial facilities. Then we can add two or three more to have almost 12 or 11 regional referral hospitals that will cover a number of counties in a region. Mm -hmm. We're talking about um, the Upper Eastern region, you already had Embu. Right. Uh, if you're talking, yes. about, uh, talking about Meru region, uh, which covers the whole area of Tarakanidi, Siolo counties. If you're talking about coast, then you cover the six counties under the coast region. If you're talking about the Rift Valley. Um, you're talking about like Nakuru level five hospital, which will then cover uh, counties in the North, North Rift region and the South Rift region. So mm -hmm. we have to rethink if that is that you create regional referrals so that are now managed by the national government. Then the county governments can handle uh, facilities either from level four or from level three. Uh, level primary healthcare facility levels. That way, then it means you have uh, some sanity because if the hospitals at regional facility and the, and the national are getting their funding directly 
from the National Treasury or from the Ministry of Health directly to these to these facilities. Then you delink them from the problem we've had, where funds funds for hospitals go into county revenue funds and then they are diverted to other needs that are not healthcare needs. That's an angle that you should also appreciate that is happening currently under the devolved system of governance, where funds meant for healthcare are being diverted to other uses. And so that's that also brings a problem that it hampers service delivery because when it comes to access to healthcare, when it comes to personnel, we do not have enough personnel in the, in the counties. We do not have um, enough medicines in the counties because the funds have been diverted elsewhere. They're supposed to have uh, been functioning for service delivery at the county level. That's an angle that we cannot, we have to be alive to that is currently mm -hmm. happening. Mm -hmm. and, and and the recentralization we're really talking about here is human resources for health. The issue of the infrastructure and equipment for the healthcare sector, let us destratify it so that then we, 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 we have a level where after this level, the counties can take charge and after this level, the national government can take charge. If we get to a point where we will structure it that way, then it brings a whole new concept of service delivery in the health sector. But for as long as we will still have a situation where funds go directly to county revenue funds and they're not protected and they're not ring first specifically for healthcare, then these funds will move into other, diverted to other needs. Mm -hmm. And what happens is that the Monainchi then also suffers because when the funds for buying medicines and equipment and supplies are not fully utilized for that, then at the facility level, there's a deficiency in terms of uh, medicine, in terms of equipment and uh, diagnostic equipment and also supplies for treatment. So that is also a reality that you must, must recognize. This is, true. Escape is that we have to rethink the way healthcare system was developed in this country. Has it functioned the way we envision or it has failed us to some extent and we have to re-engineer the entire uh, health sector and make sure that we have a system that then now works for the citizens. Okay. I mean, I mean, I, I definitely, I mean, I, I hear you on that. In terms of we have to rethink it, but also paying, 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 paying attention, I think, uh, I might add to also the political players and actors such that we don't, we don't, we don't think decentralization is a solution because it doesn't guarantee that the national government is going to say provide uh, adequate resources to to Mombasa or to Isiolo, if the national government, the priority, perhaps the, the players within that space uh, do, don't feel like those regions are, are, are of warrant to them. Because I think this, this, this was the original logic of devolution. And I think we need to then ask ourselves, and if, even if we'll devolve the funds, uh, what measures do we put that uh, county have to use this percentage on health and ETC, ETC. So I think, I think there's, I, I completely agree. I think there's a, there's a robust conversation uh, that we need to have around, around so that so that the gains we've made uh, previously around uh, healthcare devolution ETC, we just take them forward. So, but I, and I completely agree. But just moving the conversation to something else, <laughs> which is more more pertinent to what to what, what we're facing today, is in twenty I remember twenty seventeen. I, uh, I I interviewed you and uh, the former chair Dr. Luga and, and other members when you were doing the strike and the, the, the last CBA that you were you were advocating for and you wanted the, to sign the, with, with with the Council of Governors and the national government ETC. And some of the issues that you you've raised about the issues that you that 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 has led you lent the doctors to go on strike again were in part of that CBA. So so my question is that. Are the failures to implement that CBA the crisis that we're facing today? If had we implemented 2017 CBA, and not the CBA that were that you guys pushed 2017, had you implemented it fully uh, during the Corona pandemic, did, did would, would we have faced the, the kind of crisis that we have faced uh, had we implemented that CBA? Yeah, so that's a very good question because the CBA 2017 really encompassed uh, uh, broad issues in the health sector. Uh, not just on, uh, I mean, the welfare, but also on, uh, to some extent, the uh, equipping of, of healthcare, the healthcare sector. And uh, when it comes to welfare, we're looking at um, setting up of uh, what you'd call called or rather safe spaces for the doctors to to be at work, even when they're doing their, their night shifts. The issue mm -hmm. of insurance is an issue that is in the CBA. Mm -hmm. The issue of timely uh, promotions, the issue of ensuring that uh, doctors are released for, I mean, for, for, for specialist training, 
and the whole issue of, uh, I mean, the group life, WIBA, that is part of the CBA. So this is also a situation where the CBA has not been fully implemented even as we speak, and that has resulted in a situation where then COVID-19 comes and the issues that you're now grappling with are issues that have should have been addressed in the CBA. And it also shows you uh, how much um, our county governments do not take uh, um, some of the issues that we always agree on seriously, because if this agreement was really taken um, seriously in most or in all counties, then we'll not, would, I mean, we'd be dealing with different issues uh, mm-hmm. around the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, of course, what the issues of PPE, that is still something that is uh, uh, very much a problem in the country. Correct. Uh, so, so you're seeing, looking at the issues of now provision of insurance, comprehensive mm-hmm. group life, last expense, and you're seeing an issue where allowances that were agreed upon in the CBA have not been paid to some of the doctors, and so then they now become an issue of contention because then now the strain on the health workforce is, is really on the doctors is really is really now great. So there's that non-implementation of the CBA fully has resulted to some of the situation. I mean, some of the grievances that have now have now come up over the last uh, one year. For the last nine months, when we mm. had COVID nineteen in the country, yeah. mm. so I mean, so I mean, so I mean, so not, not, not a final question, but uh, heading there is that, uh, in your view, how how should we strengthen? Uh, because I mean, as you rightly said, the CBA was it was CBA, but not, nothing, not, nothing, not, nothing changed. I mean, at least you have seen there was no follow through in terms of implementation. So then, how do we one? Uh, keep government to account, particularly how do the unions, in this case the the doctors, the health the health union, how 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 should we strengthen it as a as a citizenry, and how how should we strengthen it to the extent that we keep government to account, and then and then and then lastly, just my last question as we have to conclude for for this very slight brief discussion, and I hope to come uh, as this as this as events unfold, is that where do we see ourselves as a healthcare now? Let me say, I would say post the pandemic because we're still in it, but now as we're moving forward, what are some of the critical things that we need to think about as a nation? Yeah. So going back to how do we see ourselves, what is critical? I think what really needs to be given a priority in this pandemic, apart from, of course, the response on uh, with regards to enhancing our testing capacity and, right. and, and uh, improving it, Improving our laboratories and expanding the number of laboratories that are able to conduct the COVID-19 testing, mm. the issue of uh, avail- availability of testing kits and reagents for the country. Um, more so now is that as a national priority, the welfare and uh, the welfare, safety and health of the healthcare personnel. This is not just doctors, you have nurses, clinical officers, laboratory personnel, and other subordinate staff who work in the healthcare sector. Right. It's really critical that this cadre of professionals uh, mm. be given a priority in terms of even resource allocation, mm-hmm. because we can build as many hospitals as we want, as, and, and, and rightfully say it so that even most of the county government have built facilities, because politically that is a game that can be put forth to the citizens that yes, we've built facilities, we increase the number of facilities, but then facilities, equipment, and supplies will not treat the citizens. It is the personnel that will treat the citizens. Mm-hmm. So you must allocate resources to employ more personnel to be able to offer these services mm. in the counties and across the entire country. Um, secondly, is that um, their welfare in terms of safety and health, provision of insurance, payment of uh, salaries on time, ensuring that um, all allowances that are paid to them are paid, because at the end of the day, healthcare workers remain human. They have mm. needs, they come from families, they have come from communities that are dependent on them. Mm. So we cannot ignore the financial aspects in terms of welfare of the healthcare personnel in the country, not just the doctors. Then how does the citizen, how do the citizens support? Citizens can support by actually calling to account the elected leaders in the counties, at the constituency level. I mean, the, if you go to a facility and you wait to see a doctor perhaps for six hours, it tells you that there's a shortage because um, the less doctors you have, then the more your waiting times in the facilities increase. So you have to, it takes long for you to see a specialist uh, uh, a doctor or even just a doctor because of the shortages on the ground. And so the citizens equally now have to come out 
and actually support the doctors, support the other healthcare personnel, and demand for services that are supposed to be availed to them. Because at the end of the day, when you vote, you vote that services are delivered to you. Social services, health is a social service amongst the social services that is really important uh, in any country. And so as a country, that is where the priority needs to be. And, and for us, one way of addressing the uh, human resources for health challenges that, are, that, that uh, we've faced in this context of devolution is by one, setting up the, uh, the Health Services Commission to handle healthcare personnel. Secondly, is that legislatively, there must be legislation to reinforce healthcare funds, because if you do not reinforce healthcare funds in the counties and the national government, is that these funds are then diverted to other competing interests and, and right. that then the health sector loses out. Mm. Um, we have to, thirdly is that we have to rethink how our healthcare system works. Yes, we've had devolve, a devolved system of governance with services mostly in the counties, but most of these counties are actually struggling with this service. Uh, one in the human resource aspect and two, even in terms of expanding the infrastructure. So you expand the infrastructure, yes, but you're not able to bring in and bring on board the personnel that are required to offer these services. So that is why we're saying, let us create a situation or rather a system where financing for healthcare first, and it used to work before through, uh, when, before the developed system of governance, where we had facility improvement funds, where funds would be sent directly to the facilities. The facility is the one that is supposed to account. So the board, the hospital board and of management is fully responsible for the funds that are received in that facility. And that way then it means you're putting to account the people who are managing the facilities uh, in terms of the funding, in terms of how the facilities run. Because if you leave it broadly the way it is so far, then it becomes very vague as to who is put to account with regards to provision of healthcare services. Mm -hmm. So the accountability aspect of it can be improved through that. And all this is through legislation. We must change legislation to improve the healthcare system of this country and strengthen the healthcare system. Provision of equipment and supplies, these are things that must be done and uh, must continue to be done. Of course, there's a lot of progress in regards to equipping our healthcare facilities, but even that we've seen corruption scandal around that. So the systemic problem of corruption in the country must come to a position where it should not be allowed in the health sector because corruption in the health sector is very costly. It costs the lives mm. of not just the citizens and we've seen uh, during the COVID-19, the corruption scandal around the problem procurement of personnel yeah. the lives of, of personnel in this country, healthcare personnel who are the frontline soldiers in the war against COVID-19. So those are the issues that must be addressed moving forward. Yeah. And um, I mean, if you're going to look at um, the agenda of universal health coverage, UHC is a very good uh, visionary agenda. Going into li in line with the UHC 2030 agenda for most countries across the globe, but is our country in a position where we can fully implement UHC without much obstacle, without much resistance? Because what we are seeing is that county governments are, 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 are taking a path that is actually sabotaging the UHC agenda, and that should not be the case. Mm. Oh, wow. Thanks, 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 thanks for that elaborate end, uh, Dr. Machon. I don't want to take up much of your time. But I'd also like, to, even as this event is is moving along, if I could just bring bring you 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 bringing you on board to just keep the our listeners and people watching us from all over the country and all over the world just up to speed what's happening because because I think this is a revolving door and I don't think at this issue we're not we're not out of the the, the muddy water yet and I think just we'll just be up to speed for just keeping keeping just telling us what's happening within your space. So thank 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 you for for. For, for your time, Dr. Ari. Thank you very much, Joe. Okay, have a good much day. Much appreciated. As Asante, Asante. Asante. Okay.